In our previous fixed wing videos, we were able to successfully build a 4 channel fixed wing drone and fly it semi autonomously with a flight controller. But unknown to me at the time, having the propeller in front obstructs the camera's view if we were to add cameras later on. So, to fix this issue, we need to convert a 4 channel drone setup to an 11 plane. The way to do this is by having a short wing at the front and move the main wing and the propeller at the back, leaving no obstruction for the camera in front and making the design simpler by just using two servos instead of four. Now, before all this, I need to 3D print parts for a CG fixture, a quick and simple way to find its center of gravity. Like in the previous, I used a DID motor as a substitute for a bearing. I then mount the fuselage bracket on the stand. This will act as a cradle for the vehicle. For the base, I used a leftover MDF board from previous projects. Now, like the previous design, we need to find the center of gravity of this model. And just like the previous videos, we need to perform a glide test. I started with a CG at the center of the fuse lodge and made it a little nose heavy. By the way, the design of this vehicle is also from Experimental Airlines. Please check out the channel for details. I found that the center of gravity a little further in front glides better and used that. Now for the actual vehicle, I'm using a 26 inch length fuselage. I then added a 20 inch length wing in front. For the main wing, it's made up of two 20 inch wing glued together with their own individual servos. Vertical stabilizers are added on the wing tips. just hot glued all the wings on the fuselage. The alternative is to just mount them with rubber bands. For the electronics, I tried to mount the battery as far front as possible to counterbalance the motor and main wings at the back, with a flight controller as close to the center. The setup only uses two servos, servo 1 for the left elevon and servo 2 for the right. I also added a telemetry radio for ease of calibration later on. My future plan is to get rid of the radio and just use the telemetry radio to control the aircraft. With the GPS and telemetry radio mounted outside, I then slide the electronics in. Now, after securing the electronics with barbecue stick, I proceed with the setup. The setup is basically similar to the previous vehicle. You start with the accelerometer calibration, followed by compass calibration, radio calibration and EEC calibration, and flight modes are also the same. The only difference is the servo output. We have to replace the default 4 channel setup by changing servo 1 to elevon left and servo 2 to elevon right. 3 is set to throttle and the rest are disabled.
Now, changing mode to fly-by-wire A, the servos should counteract the changes. But in this case, I could hardly see the movement. I then increased the mixing gain to 1 to make the deflections obvious. I later found out that the action on the right elevon is opposite to what was required. I checked the reverse box for elevon right to correct this issue. Now the movements are correct. To make it deflect some more, I increased the mixing gain to 1.2 for this vehicle. I then cut out a styrofoam for a nose with a styrofoam cutter. I then made sure with all the parts in that the center of gravity is still the same. I added weight in front to achieve a nose heavy. Let's go fly! Optimistic for my previous successes, I did launch the vehicle full of confidence only to find it crashing in. Okay, um, second try. Yeah, I have to fix it and it took me like uh, several days and um, this will be our second try. Wish me luck. What I failed to grasp in previous launches is that although this is basically the same size as previous model, this is a different setup. With the main wing and propeller at the back, I either need to throw it very hard or stand on higher ground. And that's just what I did. This gives time for the vehicle to recover in altitude. These are small things you learn in real world. We call it trial and error. Corporate world prefer to call it R&D. Either way, it involves time and effort. Notice a slight wobbling of the vehicle, perhaps needs tuning down the road. What's important is that it works and the rest is just optimization. I take every success and failure as a learning experience. Every failure is an opportunity to know the wrong way of doing things. A byproduct of all of this is confidence. Confidence to do what's right in future decision making. After some time, like a kamikaze drone, the vehicle lost altitude and immediately dropped. Okay, so it lost altitude and I don't know, maybe the battery drained. I think it's so good, it, it survived the, uh, the crash. Oh, I get some casualty. Hmm. So what I also learned from this build is that mounting the motor at the back doesn't get the same airflow as the front, causing the 3D printed motor mount to melt. Perhaps replacing the motor mount with aluminum and optimizing the motor and propeller setup will resolve this issue. I hope you guys find this video useful and check my other videos as well. Thank you guys for watching.